32-yard line. Delway out of the shotgun for the first time. And incomplete. Intended for Nathiel and broken up by Willie Tullis, the cornerback. Choice out of Washington and the top quarterback selected in last spring's draft. Goes right to the air. Completes it to Brooks. And Brooks is stopped by the last man, Harden. The defense against Eric Dickerson. And Dickerson's first carry nets him about six as he takes it to the 24-yard line. Andre Townsend and Jim Ryan at the 24-yard line. Dickerson, you'll see a lot of this tonight, and especially if it results in that sort of game. Greg Cragen makes the tackle. So Indianapolis, against a porous Denver run defense, can afford to keep it simple. Plus, at the Denver 18-yard line, no score, early first quarter. Eric Dickerson, third carry, and again, a good one as he takes it to the 12-yard line. As you might suspect, Dickerson carries the ball about 80% of the time on Indianapolis's running plays coming. Tonight. What about us up here? Just the back. Whoa. <laughs> Third down and four. Inside the 13, and Dickerson breaks the tackle. Touchdown. Uh, the great ones do that. Well, it's a three-way trade that has all of the clubs involved very happy right now. Buffalo 8-1. and one. They can't complain. They've got Bennett. Rams doing well. They're 7-2. and two. They've got all the draft picks. And Indianapolis has this man, Eric Dickerson. It's in 19 seconds into the game. It's 7 to nothing. Colts. Right into the trap, man. Bounces off. Easy stride into the end zone. And, Dan, you sounded an ominous warning at the beginning of the show. From the 20-yard line. And Elway airs it out for Nathiel. And it is almost intercepted. Knocked down by Chris Good. As the pass hung, Nathiel had gotten behind Good. Orson Mobley is the man in motion. And Elway on a roll. Finds Pat Kelly. Fumble if he had possession, and Indianapolis has it. And a flag goes down. Mark right here. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 88, after the play was over. First down. Had won one play out of the wishbone. Dickerson cuts it back to the outside. And steps out of bounds after a gain of four at the 11. He's run out of bounds by the cornerback, Jeremiah Castile. Goal from the 11. They give it to Dickerson. And Dickerson has his second touchdown. Familiar. It would be more like a Dallas Cowboy, middle linebacker in the Dallas Cowboy defense. And he is a strong inside linebacker. It's uh, the little... Moment of hesitancy was the difference. Yeah. Three nothing. We go to the air. Unlike Dallas, they fake to Dorsett. Elway going to the air again, and down he goes in a heap at the 28-yard line. The charge led by O'Brien Alston, a 10th-round draft pick out of Maryland. Second and 21. He steps up and then fires complete. And if it is complete, it's a fumble and it's picked up and run back to the 23-yard line. A completed pass, and it's Craig Slope who gives Indianapolis the ball after Mark Jackson fumbles. Replay Booth said the replay was inconclusive. That's why they did not overrule. Dickerson. He just draws up his own running pattern, doesn't he, at the 18-yard line? It doesn't matter where the blocking is. Well, they Second and five from the 18-yard line. Dickerson again, he's already scored twice. And a first down at the 11-yard line, and the Denver defense, porous to begin with, last in the league against the run, and minus Mecklenburg, unable to do anything to stop Indianapolis. Down and seven from the nine. His fourth straight carry is almost his third touchdown. It's first and goal at the one. Denver Broncos. Eric Dickerson is slashing and running hard, but he is following just a tidal wave of blue jerseys that's blowing everything in a white shirt out of there. Hunsley and Bentley are the other backs. They give it to Dickerson, and his fifth straight carry is his third touchdown of the night. They could have scored on the neck bone. Just give it to him. Yeah, well, I don't know if that explanation is going to cut it in Denver. <laughs> no. 
All he has to do is touch that goal line with the ball as long as he was in the air, and it appeared that that might have been the case in the first quarter. And I think one of the things that we have to do as the second quarter begins with a fumble, what a nightmare. And the second quarter begins the way the first quarter ends with a fumble by Denver and a recovery by Klecko of the Colts. And it's Dickerson who takes it to the 14. It'll be second down and five. Boyer and Townsend. Chandler into the end zone. Too high for Brooks off his fingertip. 31-yard attempt. Officially, as it will be spotted outside the 21-yard line, Clark puts it down. And he splits the upright. Does that jump off that foot? He's having a great year. 450 yarders already. 24 mm. nothing. Four receivers out into the pattern. No way on that gimpy ankle, and he can't go anywhere. Craig Swope who recovered the fumble earlier, gets credit for the sack. In snappers, it's Keith Parts instead of Bishop, who does the snapping. Horan's kick is fielded at the 46-yard line by Bill Brooks, and he takes it to the 41. So again, Indianapolis starts with terrific field position. 11.54 to go in the half. 24-0 Indianapolis. Indianapolis at the 41-yard line. Dickerson's huge night continues his fourth touchdown. There could not be a more basic play in football than the Colts just ran and stuffed it down the Denver Broncos' throat, making it look like a scrimmage. Well, their names are Chris Hinton, Randy Dixon, Ray Donaldson, Ben Utt, and Joel Patton. And look how they just disintegrate the Broncos defensively. And that guy can scoop. <laughs> there again, the bad angle is coming down from the secondary. All of a sudden, you realize he has kicked in that afterburner, and all you have is a chance to arm tackle him, and you can't do it. That's the 50th time in his career he has run for over 100 yards. He's already picked up 112, and the game is not even 19 minutes old. That's the longest run of the season for him also, isn't it? It ties his longest. Well, of course, he cast his lot in very successfully with Denver. Dorsett picks up three, takes it to the 13, and another marker is down, I think, for a face mask on Pleco. Well, personal foul the face mask number 73 defense first down with Mobley in motion Elway good protection and he hits Johnson for a first down at the Indianapolis 47 yard line and Elway going deep for Mark Jackson and he makes the catch at the two yard line a great catch the coverage by Chris Good and Jackson making the catch and staying in bounds at the two. First and goal. Well thrown, great. Of course, set the tailback. Elway takes it and throws into the end zone. Caught for a touchdown. Steve Sewell making the catch, and so Denver goes the length of the field. It's a long way back, but at least the Broncos are on the way back. They go 90 yards, led by Elway. 9.54 to go in the half. Indianapolis now leading 31-7. to and Dickerson behind him, who's already run for four touchdowns. And Eric picks up five. He's already rushed for 117 yards at this point with 9.39 to play in the first half. Of course, the Cowboys man of the year for the NFL will be announced with the Super Bowl coming up. And he just hit the 1,000-yard mark with 121 tonight. And out of the wishbone with Holgaboom calling the signals. That's Wansley's first carry of the night. Wansley played in a wishbone offense at Mississippi State. Second down and nine from the 47-yard line. And Holgaboom going deep for Brooks. He makes the catch despite Haynes having position. Haynes was there, 
still makes the catch, goes in for the score. When the ball is that underthrown, in many instances, the advantage goes to the receiver because he's more tuned into the football. And if the defender, this time Mark Haynes, if he's not right on the ball, it's really advantage receiver to be. Franchise record most points and a half by the Colts when they were in Baltimore, 42 and a half in 1956 against the Rams. Play action didn't mean anything to Mark Haynes. He was man for man all the way, didn't even see the play action. But when he took his eyes off the ball to get into the sprint, to run side by side with Bill Brooks. He lost it. Brooks comes back, gets it easily, but then he makes a pretty nifty move here about the 10 yard line to get it in. This has to feel awful good to Gary Hogaboom, who really has been relegated to second team status. And Billy Brooks, rather than just going down, decides to make something happen and stay alive after the catch. And, and Pacific. Elway on a deep drop sets up a screen for Dorsett. And Tony has a first down. He's run out of bounds up at the 46-yard line. First and 10 from the 47-yard line. And they give it to Tony D. Fumble at the 47-yard line. And another Colt recovery. Donnell Thompson with the football. Four turnovers for Reeves' Broncos. The 46-yard line. Chandler back in at quarterback. And he throws. And a fingertip stretching, reaching catch made by Matt Booza. And the crowd with a Booza chant. Third and five from the 23. Looked like Barry Swisher designed the play. Bentley gets stopped after a pickup of one. Came right in the backfield, right. part of the Pony Express. Biasucci, 40 yard field goal attempt is no good. Ooh, he hooked a scoop. It. Hooked it into the woods. Tough for this guy to be overly upset about Biasucci's miss. <laughs> First and five. Elway drops it off underneath. The catch is made by Clarence K, and he takes it to the 33-yard line. Elway to Winder. And Sammy is stopped up at the 38-yard line after a gain of four. Second down and five from the 38-yard line as Elway has time and hits Mateel. Mateel looking for the sideline, and he can't get out of bounds. He does get the first down. He's dragged down by the rookie out of Maryland, O'Brien Alston, but the clock keeps running. In this league, no mercy for Elway, the mocking chant of Elway, who steps up and runs for the first down and more and then slides at the 36-yard line, the 35-yard line. Colts jump off, flag is down, could be a free play. Elway going for Johnson, and it's picked off in the end zone, but you've got a penalty marker down. Chris Good. We've also got the interception. I think we've got two flags. One was an offsides against Baltimore. But now we've got a little fight going on back at the line of scrimmage and a late flag. I mean, with Indianapolis and a late flag thrown up at the line of scrimmage. I don't know if we're going to have a personal foul or whatever. Fouls on the play. Offside number 90, defense penalty declined. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness against the passer. Number 99, defense. First down. First and 10 from the 20-yard line. L.A. Johnson, nice move to the outside, and he's tackled at the nine. He picks up a first down. He's tackled by O'Brien Alston. And now play back in on third down and goal from the five, and Elway has it tipped away, intended for Vance Johnson. Mike Pryor covering, and it will be fourth down and goal. 27-yard <laughs> attempt. Kubiak to spot the ball at the 17-yard line. And the kick is just good. In fact, that, that five yards may have made the difference. Spent time with him. Instead, they kick it to the five-yard line. It's taken there by Albert Bentley. And Bentley has a pass, and Carlos is the man who trips him up as he takes it out to the 44-yard line. Carlos making the tackle. Want to utilize those from the 45-yard line. They're not content to sit on the lead. They're going for more. Booza makes the catch. And that 
it's a first down at the 40 yard line. Booza is the chant of the crowd with member who's as good as they come to kick field goals. So they're almost within range. Chandler oh, yeah. for Verdan. Touchdown. The speed man. Clarence Verdan. His first catch of the night. He beats Jeremiah Castile. And the Colts have just established a franchise record for most points in a half. They didn't just beat him. He just obliterated him. Blew right by him. And what a strong arm displayed by Chandler. Dead in stride. Some 55 yards in the air. Castile here locked up on man coverage all the way. And Clarence Verdan, the fastest of the Colt wide receivers. A simple fly pattern. Nothing more than dependent upon a good pass from your quarterback and enough and physical enough. I have to say that finishing as high as Denver has for the past four years, drafting as low as they have, they have not been able to get that big man. They have not been able to get the, the great outstanding players because they've been drafting way down there, 26, 27. 45 to 10 Indianapolis and return to the Hoosier Dome after this message from the National Football League and a word from your local station. Sometimes you receive it. <laughs> Second and 18 from the 14-yard line. Pump fake. And then the open man is found at the 31-yard line. Making the catch there is Matt Buza. Short of the first down by a yard. It'll be third and one. Comes to throw the football. Shotgun now. Here's Hogaboom. Or it's the wishbone and not the shotgun as Wansley carries for a first down to the 33-yard line. And if you joined us late, this is a formation used by Indianapolis last week against San Diego. In fact, the only touchdown of the game was scored out of the, sh the wishbone formation. A lot of that tailback position. Dickerson swings to the outside. Doesn't matter where he takes it or how, he gets to the 50-yard line. I don't think he minds it as long as they don't use it as a base formation. The 50. <laughs> First and 10. Looking for a first down, and he gets it. Out of bounds he goes at the 38-yard line. Gain of 12. And Chandler goes to the right side and winds up hitting the tight end. Mark Boyer, who is pushed out of bounds at the 33-yard line after a gain of five. It'll be second and five. The only thing he hasn't memorized to this point is the wishbone, because here's Pogelboom back in to run it on third down and one. Off the fake, he keeps, and he looks like an Oklahoma Sooner as he takes it to the 27. Soul setbacks, and they do run it, and he exploits the hole, and he gets to the 12 for a first down. Simple trap block when Denver is thinking past third down a long yardage. When you have this kind of weapon, just slide it to him. On third and seven from the 10. Dickerson goes out into the pattern, and then it's batted and incomplete. Trying to throw it over the middle, and I believe it was Sean Knight who was in his face, number 99. Full attempt. Start to hold. And the kick is good. So they have the ball for the first eight minutes, 26 seconds of the third quarter. And Indianapolis now leads 48 to 10. <laughs> at, the, at the 18. Swings it to Bentley. And Bentley takes it to the 21-yard line. And the third and four, Randy Robbins. Sitting by two phones as we speak. Third down and four. Chandler hits Brooks for a first down. So the rookie out of Washington improvises, finds his man, and they keep the ball. Have it out at the 35-yard line, first down. Second down and eight from the 38-yard line. Catch is made for a first down by Mark Boyer. As he takes the ball into Denver territory to the 47-yard line. In the waning seconds of the third quarter. Ten from the 47-yard line. Here's Bentley. And Simon Fletcher helps to run him out of bounds near the 41. Indianapolis on top, 48 to 10. Bentley, and he gives it to Verdan. And Verdan gets a block, and 
runs out of bounds at the 33-yard line after picking up a first down. At the 33-yard line. Fake to Bentley. Chandler takes off and slides down at the 25-yard line, a little bit short of the first down. Fourth and a short two. Option, Bentley. First down, and a first and goal to the five. Boy, that was pretty. Four in the ground. Pittsburgh, 256. And a touchdown for Bentley. You can't let a team totally dominate you on the ground as the Broncos have certainly the last three games and throughout the entire first half of the season. And back to back to back. I know last week the Broncos didn't even watch the films of their defeat by the Steelers. Heaven knows what they'll do with these films. National Anthem, great singer. Gary Kubiak is now the quarterback. With Elway back on the bench, and Johnson makes the catch out at the 32. The folks here, of course, are hoping that uh, the 1992 Super Bowl will be awarded to Indianapolis. The NFL. Yeah, that's only 400,000 people. <laughs> Second and one, Kubiak throws over the middle, and the catch is made by Winder, and a first down out at the 41. It is a sports-minded, sports-crazy city, really, and they've... It all hurts. You're right, it hurts a lot more when you're down by 30, 40 points. Third down and six from the 45-yard line. And Kubiak hits Sewell. He has a first down as he's tackled at the Indianapolis... 45 with under nine minutes now to play. But a Monday night game, you get about five seconds. <laughs> Second and ten. Vance Johnson to the 38-yard line. It'll be third and about three. Kubiak. Hey, can't hold on. It'll be fourth down. I guess it's easier when you don't have the NCAA to do. To can contend with you can. <laughs> Blatantly asked for somebody. <laughs> right. Ball. Fourth and two, and they give it to Sewell on the inside handoff. And Sewell gets inside the 15 and is bumped out of bounds at the 12-yard line by Eugene Daniel. First and 10, Denver at the 12. Kubiak hits Sewell, and he gets tackled in bounds at the seven-yard line after a gain of about five. That's won this game tonight. Second down and five. The surprising thing, though, is that a team can play like Denver has two weeks in a row. Kubiak throwing into the end zone for a touchdown to Vance Johnson. So they played their worst game of the year against Buffalo in midseason as Carlos's extra point is missed. And does an ass figure. Denver lined up for an onside kick and loose ball. Who's got it? They've got it. Denver. So a 6-0-1 remaining in the game and Indianapolis leading 55 to 16. Tim Lucas recovers the onside kick and Denver will keep the football. 45, Browns and Oilers from the Astrodome next Monday. Kubiak, he runs out of bounds as he crosses the 50 and then stops the clock with 5.47 to play in the game. And both quarterbacks healthy again. Kozar and Moon. Shovel pass to Sewell. And Sewell staying inbounds and going all the way for a touchdown. Steve Sewell with a little shovel pass. With 5.39 to play in the game. Another onside attempt. by Carlos at the five-yard line. Oh, and then Carlos goes in for another shot. <laughs> and goal, they figure Dickerson has scored four touchdowns tonight. And they make him a chance for a fifth. And what are they going to do? They're going to call a timeout? That's what they're going to do. On third and goal from the eighth. And then they hand it off to Wansley, who takes it to the four-yard line. So it'll be fourth down and goal. Fourth and goal from the four. Instead, it's Wansley, and he goes nowhere, and they turn the ball over on down. So Denver takes over 
at its own four yard line with three minutes and 13 seconds to play. Second down and five from the nine yard line. And Kubiak takes it to the 18 yard line and that's a first down. And a big night for the franchise. Their first ever Monday night appearance at home as Sewell takes the pass and takes it out to the 35-yard line. They put them away early. Put a tap dance on them. Fumble. I do believe Denver has recovered. Well, they're going to rule it down, I believe. Crowd with one final Elway chant, even though Kubiak's in the game. As Johnson makes the catch out at the 46-yard line, and a first down. So Ron Meyer, who watched his team go one and five, now watches them win three straight, four and five, and a chance to get to the 500 mark this Sunday when the New York Jets visit. Dickerson touchdown. Kubiak on what should be the final play of the game throws a Hail Mary incomplete. And that will do it. So for the first time ever, Monday Night Football comes to Indiana and the Colts make it very much a night for the home folks to remember and for us to remember and remember I'll see you guys in Houston maybe once again the final score Indianapolis 55 Denver 23.